Hello everybody, it's Captain Kerb here and welcome back to another Yoshi Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be diving into the coding and uh, the stage editor as well as creating stages and getting them working and getting fully playable mods working in the Yoshi Engine. So what we're going to start off by doing is going to the toolbox. Now last episode, if you recall, uh, we used, we learned how to put in songs and weeks into the mod, and I told you guys that we are, were going to be uh, skipping over this tab. Today, we're going to click it. Uh, you're going to be welcomed with the screen, and all that we're going to do is go down here, and as per Yoshi Engine, we're going to click Create. We're going to want a stage JSON name, since the first one is going to be for our curb song, it's going to be called Black, because that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a dark screen. So we're going to click Create there, and boom, now we've got a stage. So what this is, is it's essentially exactly what it's going to be. I'm not going to do a whole lot of movement here. We're just going to move Boyfriend uh, back a bit. This is going to be just be for our curb song, and I haven't made a stage for the song yet, so... You know, we'll work with that a bit later. All you have to do, click save now and exit out. That will be it for that stage. Now we're going to go to the next stage and we're going to click create. And this is going to be the cassette girl stage. So we're going to call this alley. And as you can see, there is a... So for this, for this next stage, I'll go a little bit more in depth since there's other stuff that will obviously come along with it. That little black stage was just a little preface for myself. So next we have the stage called Alley, and there is this warning underneath it, but we're going to ignore that for now because I will teach you how to code that in a little bit later. Click Create, and once again, we are found with this uh, black screen. So what we're going to do is, uh, navigation-wise, how you move around is with the scroll wheel on your mouse or by swiping on your touchpad, you can scroll in and out or zoom in and out. Uh, you can also press the arrow keys to move the camera around. So every single stage editor starts off with three characters, dad, GF, and boyfriend. And those are your three standard characters that are going to be in everything. We have our camera zoom here, which we can obviously zoom it out or zoom it in. For this, we're going to leave it at normal. Next, we have our selected elements, which we'll deal with a little bit later, and our elements. So my favorite way to do uh, to do stages in Yoshi Engine is to go to the mod that I'm working on, which in this case is the Cassette Girl mod, and we're going to go there. We're going to click that. We're going to go to the assets. The uh, shared images, and then we're going to find the weak CG. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of things here. So what we're going to start off with is the BG layers. All that we're going to do is control click those and simply drag them into the engine and watch the magic happen. Boom. Look at how nice that is. All of our background layers already done, and we'll deal with the other stuff right after. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the boppers, in which you're just going to want to click one of each, and also the CGBG. Simply drag those in, and boom, look at that. It all worked, and as you can see, we have all of our elements in. We're also going to add in the lights after, but like I said, we'll do that after. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move all of the characters forward. So what you can do is you can click on every element here and you can move it forward or backward in the layering. So as you can see, as I move girlfriend forward here, she comes forward in the actual background. What I like to do is girlfriend in the as the third layer, boyfriend as the second, and dad as the first. Next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drag them into our scene here. So girlfriend will stand back here and she'll just be bopping. Uh, by the way, I am literally just clicking on these sprites and dragging them to their position. And that's all that you have to do is you just have to make sure that these are selected, that this person is uh, more apparent than the background, and then you just move. And we'll move boyfriend in there as well. Perfect. Bopper one, we're going to move now all the way back to here. Bopper two, we'll move over here. 
and we'll grab crowd free one and move him right there and we'll grab crowd free two oops that's crowd free two this is crowd free one and we'll move him right here uh yeah that's good enough we're not we're not being too faithful to the original so all of those little textured backgrounds that we want that we saw we're going to put those just at the back here so we'll simply just get to that and move that back here since the camera won't be seeing it very often so we don't have to worry about that too much now there was one other thing that we're going to do and that's going to be the lights that are here as you can see we're just going to use the up light here and we'll just drag that in and as you can see it has a nice little radius around it and i keep dragging the other one and now all we have to do is click this and simply just put it where we want it now in this case i'm going to be making it a little bit bigger and we're going to be zooming in as well a little bit so that i can actually see what's going on here make it a bit bigger 1.4 should be good drag it to its position right there and as you can see works just great and that's that's it for stages all that uh you can also go to the selected elements tab i was going to mention this and you can change the sprite position by factors of one you can change the scroll factor meaning that as the camera scrolls along how much the actual element will move you can change the scale as we were just doing you can also enable anti-aliasing which essentially uh, helps the game run a little bit better as it will load it uh, as a as a not an entity with a hitbox it's more programming terms but all that you need to know is most of the time it's on all that we have to do now is click save and there we go our save is a success and move out very nice now we have two stages our alley and our black so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our files here uh once i find them we're going to go back to our to our actual uh mods folder go to cassette girl mod simply go to stages and as we can see there are two stages Next, what we have to do is we have to click new and you're going to want to make a text document. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to rename it to whatever your uh, whatever your JSON name is dot HX. So in this case, it will be Ali dot HX. Simply click that. You're going to get a, a rename uh, warning here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to override it. Now, I would also very much recommend having visual code installed for this tutorial series as we are now going to dive into coding. So now that we have our alley.hx, hx stands for a hakes file and hakes flixel is what FNF uses to actually run. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the function create. I spelled that wrong. Function create. And we're going to add uh, the curly brackets and parentheses behind create. It's basically saying it's a function. If you don't know code, uh, I highly recommend talking to the going on the Effin, uh the Friday Night Modding Discord server and going and talking with those people. They definitely know and can explain it a lot better than I can. I'm mostly just going to be writing out code that you then can then copy and paste essentially to your mods and it will work. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to type stage and we're going to want to type equals and we're going to do a load stage method and then we're going to add parentheses and in uh, and then we're going to want to add quotation marks and add in your stage. But it's not going to be your stage, obviously. It's going to be the stage that we want to load, which in this case will be the alley stage. Next, you're going to want to add semicolon after that because otherwise the program will get mad and crash. Next, we're going to want to add global and then square brackets. And then we're going to want to add the word stage. Only use use the word stage don't type in alley or whatever stage you're using because this is how the game will recognize and be able to play with the stages once we get into more advanced programming in which like certain stage uh 
elements are moving during songs or stuff like that. Simply just click enter, at, or in this case, uh, a quotation mark, a square bracket, and then space equals, and then your stage. And that's going to be the start of your function. Next, we're going to want to add a new function, which we will call beat hit. Simply add in. And in your parentheses for this one, you're going to want to add in the cur beat. Which will essentially tell the game that every beat, this should happen. And in this case, we just want to use the stage dot on beat with the on beat. Uh, yeah, just like that. And then your parentheses and then your uh, semicolons. And that's going to be your one stage. So we're going to do the exact same thing. In fact, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to press Control C to copy it. I'm going to go back to my... Uh, stages here and I'm going to click new text document and we're simply going to make a new one for my black stage. Simply call it black.hx. Uh, yes, I want to change it. Go into it. Simply click paste. Simply change this alley to black and this will load our black stage and I will show you it in a minute. Now there is one thing that we're going to want to do before we do this. We want to go back to the cassette girl, and as you can see here, there is a song config.json. And what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to right click it and click rename. We're gonna want to change this JSON to HX. Once you change it to HX, it will become a lot more usable for us. All that you want to do is you want to highlight all of this and get rid of it. We'll worry about uh, cutscenes and such a little bit later on. Next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a switch statement and our switch statement is going to be our song. So basically this is saying to the uh, program, if this song is in, if this song is being called or is being asked to play, we'll call, we'll go with, then we're going to want to load code. This is how we'll do mod charts later on. This is how we're going to do cutscenes for starting and ending songs. This is how we're going to load our stages. All that we're going to do is we're going to put in the word script and then we're going to put equals and then we're going to put in uh, square brackets our path to our stages uh, dot hx. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to type in stages and then dash. Uh, oh, wait, I messed this up. I'm sorry. You need to add in a case uh, for whatever song you're doing. So in this case, we're going to do one for curb. All that you do and then at the end you, you're, you're going to want to add a colon that's for only for cases uh it's barely used elsewise and then we're going to want to do our scripts uh equals and then we're going to want to add our square brackets and then our quotation marks and then add in stages dash black because that's the stage that we want to load you're going to want to make sure you add semicolons at the end of that and I'm going to very quickly do the rest of the songs. So in this case, we have Earworm. Uh, scripts. So stages dash alley. And one more for... Oops, I added the space in between there. You can space it out, but I prefer not to, especially in the cases, because for your songs, you'll, very, you'll get a lot of... Um, different stages that will end up being called in especially if you end up making a big mod and then the last one is called smoking and colon scripts equals stages oh i added dash machina that should be alley alley and colon semicolon and now we're going to click save I do it a couple times just to make sure it's saved. We're going to make sure that both of these are saved because we don't want anything going wrong. And then we're going to go back to the game. And the wonderful thing about Yoshi Engine is that you don't actually have to exit the game in order for your changes in scripts to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into free play. And if you, in case you don't remember from the last episode, Curb was taking place on a stage. If this worked, it will be taking place in a black void. I guess we're going to find out. Let's try it. No errors. And there it is. 
And as we can see now, the camera is a little bit off, so I will fix that quickly. And what you can do when you have developer mode on is you can actually click enter to pause the song. You can go to down to edit opponent and you can, uh, and now I can actually show you guys how to edit offset the camera. Now in this case, because our camera is all messed up due to the stage that we created, I'm going to basically put it out a few and then we're going to bring it down a few. Just wait a second for that to go. Perfect. Save that. A couple times, just to make sure. Exit that. And wait for it. Three, two, one, go. That's a bit better. We can do a little bit better than that, though. I'll just switch that very quickly here. Okay, come on. There we go. Uh a little bit further this way, and a little bit more down. There we go. That should be good. And now, if we go back... Three, two, one, go. We can see that our camera is perfectly set here. And now we can see that our boyfriend and character are doing their thing. So, wonderful. Now let's make sure that Cassette Girl stage is working by going to Free Play, going to one of her songs, let's go to Smoking, and we'll click Play, or Enter in this case. And if this works, we should get a nice stage. And indeed we do! Look at how nice that looks, eh? We got the lights on the background, the characters, the camera's working great, everything is just wonderful and as you can see we have almost fully ported a mod to Yoshi engine in the matter of four episodes and about I don't know an hour real life and that was super easy so that's it really for uh, making base mods in Yoshi engine next episode we're going to be uh, taking a look at the chart editor and how to actually chart in Yoshi engine so, until then, see you guys.